Hey everybody, Ben Nelson here. Hope you're doing awesome. I totally failed doing my uh, my my last one, which was supposed to be in December. Uh, so here I am, almost at the end of January. I am giving my my market update with uh, December numbers. So those normally come out at uh, the you know the middle ish of the month. So I'm a little bit behind the ball here. I apologize about that, but wanted to. Do, Give you some quick updates there and want to tell, kind of show you where where the market's going to be going here in 2022 and i'm going to get really quick into the point here because i don't want uh to drone on and have you guys miss kind of the key point here that i'm going to get to so i'm going to try to get to that as quick as possible here for you so first thing is is inventory december inventory was 0.6 months of inventory that's 0.6 so almost uh, almost a half a month of inventory, just over a half a month of inventory, I should say. Uh, so not very much inventory. We currently have about 1,500 active residential listings on the market, and there was about 2,500 closed sales in December. Uh, so that's where those numbers come from, that 0.6 months of inventory, but very, very little inventory. So uh, this is, again, the Portland metro area that has this. Um, interestingly, uh, and this is why you absolutely want to look at your local market because it can vary so much. I know there's a lot of markets that are very tight on inventory, um, but uh, the nationally uh, inventory levels as of November of 21, we had about six and a half months of inventory on a national level, which is not um, overall too bad. So um, very, very interesting because that's a decent amount of inventory, but uh, Portland is definitely not in that, uh, in that situation we have less than a month of inventory and uh, we don't see a whole lot of uh, relief there we do see some more new construction coming on uh, some increased building permits that sort of thing which is great but uh, but nothing that's going to solve that problem super quickly um, so I'm not really sure what markets have the have the higher inventory making that average six and a half nationally but uh, again that's why you really want to look at your local market and see what it's doing you can't just look at national numbers uh, because that does not tell the whole picture. Every market is different. So new listings were down about 8% in December, which obviously did not help with that inventory issue. That's down 8% compared to uh, the December of the year before, which we were already low. So we're, we were trending down. It was much lower than that from the prior month, I think 28% uh, down from November. Uh, so definitely, I mean, December is typically down from November anyway, not, not um, a, a huge surprise there, but uh, but it is even less than what it was last year. So we're trending the wrong direction year to year in number of new listings. We definitely need to see an increase in listings to help with that supply issue. Along the same lines of the inventory levels, housing starts have struggled so much since uh, the crash back in the, the mid to late 2000s. Uh, and we have just, we saw a huge drop off of, of housing starts. It just totally fell off a cliff. Uh, and it's slowly been trending back up and that is continuing to happen. We are continuing to see more housing starts, but we're, uh, but we're nowhere near where we were both prior to the crash and with how short we have been on inventory, uh, we are still way behind on, on where we need to be to, to catch back up and provide all the needed housing in the market. Average and medium sale prices were up about 15% uh, over, year over year, December, 2021. Uh, versus December 2020. Uh, and so the median sales price is just uh, under 572,000 and the average sale price is about 509,000. So 15% increase, pretty significant increase in prices. And so what does that mean moving forward here into 2020? So let's get into that. Uh, we, we, and this is the main crux of what I wanna get across, especially if you're considering buying uh, and you're payment sensitive, okay? So listen up. If you're, if you're kind of on the cusp of your budget and you've been pre-approved maybe, or you kind of have a budget in mind, uh, but prices are starting to get away from you because this is gonna be really important. Interest rates are going to go up this year. I've been saying this for a number of years that I just did not see how they're gonna keep them low for so long. Well, now we are seeing uh, a large amount of inflation in a lot of areas, and they just cannot continue to keep interest rates so low. They are going to go up. I will not be wrong this time. It's taken a lot longer to get to this point than I thought, but uh, they will go up. So if you're if you're payment sensitive, 
uh, that's going to affect your payment, obviously. Um, the, the other side of that is we still have, we have inflation continuing to push prices up. We have build costs continuing to go up. Lumber prices are, have been volatile. You know, some of that has to do with supply. Some of that has to do with uh, just the overall inflation um, in, in the market. Another thing to be looking at as far as trends in real estate prices is the stock market has been extremely volatile this last month or so. And you might be asking, what does the stock market have to do with real estate? Well, what happens when other investment options start to become more risky or at least perceived more risky? People tend to move over to safety. So that doesn't maybe affect you directly if you're a home buyer, uh, but if you are looking to invest, uh, if, or if people are looking to invest and they're invested in the stock market and they're looking at some more, more stable, safer options, they might start pulling money out of that and putting it into, into real estate and the, how that does affect you as, uh, as a home buyer, uh, and an investor, but as, but as a home buyer as well is even if you're not an investor, now you've got more money moving into the real estate market because money is coming out of the stock market or more volatile investments and it is moving into perceived more stable investments in real estate and so that's going to be another factor of increased demand in an already low inventory environment and so we've got uh, low supply levels we've got inflation and we've got build costs increasing and so what does that mean it means that's a lot of things that are pushing the prices of real estate up and it's are going to continue to do that so what do you have now you have now Prices continuing to go up, you've got rates trending up, and so that's gonna be a double whammy of affordability for a lot of people. And you're gonna have higher, a higher payment uh, by those two combinations. And so what does that mean? It means less buying power out in the marketplace when you have uh, you know, your payment going up from interest rate and house prices going up because of those factors. Uh, your buying power is gonna start trending down. So if you are on the cusp, if you have been considering buying, but you have just not pulled the trigger, if you have any, I, you know, if you have any desire to buy in the next year or two, I would get off the fence. I would get in the game and I would Aggressive. pursue getting something here as soon as you possibly can before the rate heights, hikes continue, and they've already started, but before we get too far into the rate hike um, trend here and, and the prices going into spring and with the continued struggles with inventory. So that's my, that's my advice. I don't think rates are gonna get incredibly out of control. I think we'll still be, you know, <clears throat> probably mid fours or something like that by the end of the year. But again, you know, we're, we're used to 3%, sub threes even for a while. And um, that's a that's a pretty big increase, and then if you add another five or ten percent on top of uh, where we're at now on prices, that's a that's a that's a significant increase in your monthly payment. So don't wait, get in the game. If I can help you with that, if I can advise you in any way, if I can get you set up with one of my lending partners that are awesome and get you pre pre qualified if you're not already, um, talk to you about some loan programs. I would love to do that. Uh, I do not want you to miss out if you are uh, wanting to get in the game and start looking. So let me know what I can do to help. Appreciate you guys looking uh, and watching this video and hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully it gets you off the fence if you've been considering but have not pulled the trigger on that. Uh, reach out to me anytime, call, text, or email or just shoot me a message in, uh, in social media here and I will do my very best to help get you from where you are now to where you wanna go. Thanks again. Make it a great rest of the day. We'll see you again soon for the next market update.